Good morning. I'm Tenny McCarty. I'm the uh, uh, owner and founder of Shades of Hope Treatment Center in Buffalo Gap, Texas. It's an all addiction treatment center with a primary focus on eating disorders. And how I got into the eating disorder field is a, a short story. It's a long story, but I'm going to shorten it. Uh, I've been in the addiction field since the late, late 70s, treating drug addicts and alcoholics. And while dying from an eating disorder that I didn't know that that's what it was. I had been obese all my life. I was an obese child. In fact, I weighed 139 pounds in the first grade, uh, which is about 10 pounds more than I weigh today in my adult life. And I ate myself up to 287 pounds. I could lose weight, I would lose 150, 160, 130 pounds. I did that five different times uh, and I would gain it back. The first four times I gained it all back. The last time I knew it had to be different uh, and I had lost 160 pounds and I had gained back about 90, 80 or 90 of it and what I started doing and this, I didn't even know the word bulimia, but what I started doing, I thought, well, if I take laxatives, that will help me get rid of the food. And for the next 13 years, from 1972 to 1985, September the 19th, in fact, of 1985, I took massive amounts of laxatives <clears throat> up to by 85, take it up to 100 to 125 a day. Now, people usually gasp when I say that or they don't believe me and that I don't really care what they do or not. I know what's real. And the reason I took so many, it's like any other drug, they quit working. And at first they would work and help me get rid of the food. Uh, and my uh, whole aim was to get rid of the food so I wouldn't gain any more of the weight back that I had lost. And that didn't work. It, it really did not work. Uh, but I kept doing it and kept doing it. But what I couldn't do is I couldn't stop the eating. Uh, I was addicted to food. I was addicted to the volume of the food. I was addicted to sugar, high carbs, uh, and, and I hated the weight. I hated being overweight. I don't think uh, weight bothers some people, but it bothered me. It bothered me from the time I was a little girl because I was always made fun of and, you know, never chosen for a sport and all the things that little uh, overweight children experience. I experienced it all my life. I was an old woman at, as a young teenager because of my weight. You know, by the time I was 13, I weighed 100, uh, 230 pounds and I kept doing that. I kept eating. My, my mother was an alcoholic and prescription drug addict and I used food to ease the pain of living like my mother used uh, alcohol. So, and she was also overweight, but she would never got over 200 and usually kept her weight about 160. And, and she was a, like a stand-up comedian. And she would tell me, she said, uh, you know, and because I would get upset that people would make fun of me. And she'd say, you know, <clears throat> if you cry, you cry, you need to learn how to laugh laugh it learn how to laugh at yourself and people will laugh with you but if you cry you cry alone and i cried a lot about my weight and what people said i could never laugh with people or at people so i want to just briefly say by the grace of god while i was working i was program director of an alcohol drug center and one of the therapists that i had hired from la came to me one day and in essence did an intervention on me. He had a friend that was going to work in an eating disorder in LA. They were opening on the following Tuesday and he uh, had been observing me and he went over my symptoms. He said, you have brown spots all over your face. I did, my liver was shutting down. Uh, my colon was falling out of my body. Uh, I was dying from the inside out and I was seeing a doctor, but I never once told him you know, doc, I'm taking over a hundred laxatives a day because uh, basically I didn't want to stop taking them for fear I'd gain all of the weight back. So Alan uh, shared, I mean, showed me or uh, shared with me the symptoms, the physical symptoms that he saw. 
the, my face was just a brown mass from the liver dysfunction. Uh, my hair was falling out. My skin was dry. I had cracks in the corners of my eyes, my mouth. I was a mess. And uh, he said that he would watch me maybe in group or doing a lecture and I would get upset about something. Maybe one of the guys said something and uh, I'd call for a break. They'd go outside to smoke and I would go to the candy machine, get me two or three candy bars, lock myself up in the bathroom. And when I would come out, he said I would be calm. <sighs> It's that sense of ease and comfort. It's the same sense of ease and comfort that alcohol brings to the alcoholic or the uh, or the drugs bring to the drug addict. When you're addicted, a substance makes you feel better and I would be calm for a while. And so his wife, how he knew to recognize my symptoms is his wife was a recovering anorexic and bulimic. And they had a friend going to work at this eating disorder the following Tuesday. And the woman that was opening the center uh, had written a book called Fat is a Family Affair by Dr. Judy Hollis. And Alan, you know, it's abusive to point out a problem without pointing out a solution. Uh, and Alan didn't. He pointed out the problem, but he also handed me the solution in the form of that book. And he asked me if I'd go home and read it, and I did. I read every page, and it's the first time in my life that I had read where people did things with food and with their bodies that I had done to mine. It was not only the food, it was the food behavior, it was the uh, bulimia, and I didn't even know that what I was doing with the laxatives had a name, uh, that it was called bulimia. And so I didn't make it to treatment on Tuesday, but I was there on Wednesday, checked in September the 19th of 1985, that's been 35 years ago. It'll in September, it'll, I'll celebrate 35 years of recovery. Uh, and it changed my life. It was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire human life because I had to do treatment without finding something to ease the pain. Uh, I, my, the food was cut way down. Uh, I mean, to normal portions. Uh, the laxatives were gone. I had nothing to bring in here to make myself feel better. And so the story is long. I could talk a lot about the, my story and about my journey the last 35 years. It's, you know, it's really not about the food or the weight or the number on the scale. Uh, and it is until it isn't. And I do want to report, I'm maintaining 160 pound weight loss from 287 down to what I am today, which is smaller than I was in the first grade. Uh, and that may not mean much to you, but it means a lot to me because I've never dreamed, never dreamed in my wildest dreams that I could be a normal weight and that food would take its proper place in my life. Food has taken its proper place. I no longer diet. I no, no longer do the crazy things that I did with food, but I had to find a way to recover. Uh, there are different ways to recover and there's treatment centers who do different things. But what has helped me and many thousands of people that we have treated is the basis of our treatment is we do uh, teach people the 12 steps that the Alcoholics Anonymous program has loaned to other people with other addictions. So we introduce people to the 12 steps and encourage them to get help after they leave treatment uh, and find a program to live by. We believe that any, uh, any addiction eating disorders or any addiction is about, it's a spiritual problem in that we lose ourselves inside the addiction. It is a very self-centered addiction. It's all about us. We're always focused about us. That is a spiritual problem. And I believe, believe the solution has to be spiritual. It's about finding something greater than ourselves to, to rely on and to depend on. And most of us choose that something to be the God of our own understanding. I believed in God from the time I was eight years of age, but I never dreamed of turning my food or my eating disorder over to him on a daily basis. And I've done that, and guess what? He has taken it. The food's taken its proper place in my life. Food is food. I can enjoy eating. It has not, it's taken its proper place is all I can say. It does not live rent-free in my head 24 hours a day like it used to. 
So I want to just talk briefly for a few minutes about the different eating disorders. There's actually about 10 identified eating disorders, but I want to tell you basically three uh, that we see them on a spectrum and we treat all eating disorders here, but I want to talk about the primary. You know, here in the pandemic, people, you know, there's jokes about people uh, eating at home and cooking and gaining weight and there's lots of fun being made about it and with it and about people who are overweight and gaining weight and this and that and something else. And, uh, you know, for normal eaters, they can do that. They can do that because what they'll do is, you know, cook good food with their families. They may gain five or 10 pounds, but I will tell you, if they're normal eaters, they will get that weight off. It'll be no big deal. For people who have eating disorders or disordered eating, uh, the weight won't come off. They will add more weight or they will find a way to get rid of the weight or they will begin to restrict their food. Uh, an eating disorder has uh, is like addiction. It's a twofold problem. It has a physical, a very definite physical component, uh, and then there's emotional and a mental side, and the main problem lies on the mental and emotional side. If it's just, if you just have a physical problem with the weight, you eat too much food and you gain weight, go to Weight Watchers, go to Jenny Craig, any of those things that you're seeing on Instagram and Facebook now, ways to lose weight, they will work. I, and I can tell you, I did, did it five different times, different things to lose massive amounts of weight, but I never could keep it off. So if you have an eating disorder, it's different than having disordered eating. The thing that makes it a difference between an eating disorder and disordered eating is that mental and emotional side. It's that mental obsession where you can sit and have a conversation supposedly with your spouse or your children or you're doing homeschooling. If you have an eating disorder and you have that mental obsession, you may your kids may think you're present, but you're thinking about that stash that you have hidden in your lingerie drawer, drawer you know, that candy bar that you don't want your children to find, or you've got something hidden in the back of the freezer, or you want your kids to go outside so you can binge and purge, you know. It's difficult, it's hard to practice an eating disorder, particularly when all the family's at home. So this talk is really, it's addressed to everyone, but it's really those that are suffering from untreated eating disorders. So I briefly want to go over the spectrum. <clears throat> and if you have more questions or more concern, call the center, Shades of Hope. You can find it, just you go to uh, Shades of Hope dot com and uh, find find us on the internet or you can find me on Instagram, whatever. So on the spectrum, the far side of the spectrum is the compulsive overeating. That's where people use food. <clears throat> and if you have an eating disorder, you begin to use food more and more and more. It's the overeating. Uh, and then, you know, people can be normal weight and still be have a severe compulsive overeating uh, eating disorder. And how they can maintain that weight is they eat compulsively, maybe three or four days. They get scared of gaining of the weight and so they restrict for three or four days. Now they never go completely over to morbid obesity or go to the other side of anorexia with anorexia, but they do that binge restrict, binge restrict, and it's a deadly dance that stays with you that where it's uh, like I say, the eating disorder, any addiction is between our two ears. It's in the thinking. So these folks are thinking they don't have an eating disorder that are binging and then restricting to keep from gaining weight. You might listen to this little video and everyone has to diagnose themselves. I can't diagnose you or a doctor can. What we can is give you the signs and symptoms. So if you get, are a compulsive overeater and you take it to the extreme, it turns to morbid obesity. Morbid obesity is bad. Used to be, we say, 80 to 100 pounds overweight. Now it's gone to more of the BMI. So that's the compulsive overeating. And our nation is made of, of chronic morbid obesity. And everyone comes up with the solution, but you know, every it's much more than the food. That is one part of an eating disorder. Very few people treat the underlying causes and conditions, the 
of most on the middle side. So on the other side is the under eating, that's the self starvation, it's called anorexia. Uh, that is a serious psychiatric diagnosis and it's the has the highest uh, death rate of any of the psychiatric diagnoses is anorexia. It's the hardest eating disorder to treat and people can recover from it. The main thing with anorexia is about learning, uh, is wanting to live in perfection and it's about control. Many of your anorexics, everyone I've ever tr uh, treated, and I don't have the personal experience as being anorexic. I do have a daughter that is in good recovery from anorexia and I watched her almost die. But personally, I, had no, I haven't, by the grace of God, gone to that side. But anorexia is a deadly disease that is a killer left untreated. And so the main thing is about control. Anorexics, I don't think they can control what's going on in their life, <clears throat> but they can control what goes on in their mouth, goes in their mouth. So it's a lot about control. All the eating disorders are about control. So then somewhere in the middle is bulimia. And bulimia is about taking in more calories than are needed. That's the compulsive overeating side. You take in more calories and man, you have a fear of, oh my God, I'm gonna gain weight. And then you find a way to get rid of it. And that is through laxatives, that is through uh, purging over that uh, porcelain throne, it's through excessive exercise, it's any way to get rid of the food out of the body. And what the payoff is for these uh, different diseases for anorexia is that feeling of being in control. It's a false sense of security, being that feeling of being in control. And anorexics do get hungry. I thought that they didn't, but they do. But they rise, it's almost like rising above normal people and thinking, well, we don't have to eat like they do. And one of the symptoms of anorexia is cooking and feeding others. So bulimics, what bulimics get out of bulimia is <clears throat> when you take in that uh, massive amounts of food, it, oh, it just feels so good for a few minutes. It's that sense of ease and comfort. It pushes the pain, the anger, the rage down. And when you release it through purging or laxatives or whatever, you, what you get is that release. And that's what people get addicted to is the release of getting it out of your body. And when you do that as a recovered bulimic myself, we swear every time we'll never do that again. And we mean it. Bulimia is the messiest of all of the eating disorders because, and it's the most costly because we spend hundreds of dollars can on one binge, 50 to to $100 on one binge and then instantly purge it out. So there's a lot of guilt around practicing bulimia. Uh, and then it messes up the bathroom, it messes up your clothes, and it's hard to find a place to purge, especially during this time when all the family's at home. You have to get very creative. You have to throw up outside in flower pots, anywhere. Uh, and so, but what you get out of it is that release. And most of your bulimics, or most of any eating disorder person, the underlining feeling is rage and anger. And so with your compulsive overeater, that is what is underlining most of the compulsive eating is that anger and that pain. And most of this is set up from the past. This is those underlining causes and conditions that must be addressed in order to recover. It's much more than the food. If it was just the food you're seeing every day, if you're getting on social, social media, you're finding ways every single day, ways to lose the weight. You know, every exercise gimmick, every diet, every this, every that. And if that's all there was to it, people would do that one time and lose the weight. But you know, ways to lose weight, the exercise, the eating, I mean, the weight, uh, the uh, business, weight loss business is a billion dollar business. And people with weight problems fall for it all the time. And what I say, if we don't stand for something, we'll fall for anything. And we keep falling for those quick fix gimmicks. gimmicks. And I admire anyone that can lose the weight. And I'm all for it. I don't care how what you do. 
I support anyone in doing what they have to do to lose the weight. Look, go a step farther and, and look at those underlying causes and conditions and treat that mental and emotional side. Because if you don't, you might keep the weight off or what you, if you do, if you don't treat what is driving the addiction, you will trade off to another addiction. Many of your uh, people who have bariatric surgery, they lose the weight, but their metabolism changes. 35%, this is not my statistics, but at 35% who have had bariatric surgery turn out to be alcoholics because their metabolism has changed. They go to drinking to eat, to fill that hole in their soul that food used to do, and they become instant alcoholics. We've treated a, a lot of them. Many who have the surgery gain the weight back because they have not addressed the underlying causes and conditions, and they can't give up the food. It is much like alcoholism and, dr and drug addiction. Uh, people say, and my little husband always felt, always felt so sorry for me that I had to treat my eating disorder, uh, and I said, and he was, and I have permission to tell you, he was a recovering alcoholic, and when he passed away, he had over 32 years of recovery from his alcoholism, but he would say, honey, if I had to drink three shots of scotch a day and nothing in between, I couldn't make it. I don't know how you just eat three meals a day now and nothing in between. You know what? He didn't have to feel sorry for me. There are over 240 different wonderful foods out there that I can enjoy. Food is not the problem. It's that mental and emotional part that is the problem. And if you don't look at that and get some serious, serious help for it, uh, eating disorders are killers. Eating disorders are progressive <clears throat> and they are chronic and they will kill you if they're not addressed. Now, it's like any other thing. My very first eating disorder client, she was a bulimic. She said, Tenny, I've got a disease that won't let me die, but it won't let me live. And that's the thing about all addictions. We may have it for years. We don't die from it immediately, but we can. We never know. Uh, but it doesn't let us live. It robs us from our life. So if you have or having any problems with the food or with any addiction that you want help from, give us a call. You know, we do have a 42-day inpatient program, but we also, my daughter, the recovering anorexic, her name's Kim and I, uh, we do an intensive once a month, uh, once a month every year, and we haven't been able to have them because of the pandemic. But we've been doing them for over 30 years. And so we have one in July, which is full, but we'll have one in August and hopefully every month after that. So if we can help, or if you just like to talk with me, I'm doing some uh, phone meetings and uh, counseling sessions. And if you have any interest in that, give me a call. I can't take a whole lot, but I, I'm taking some and I have a couple of slots. So. If you have any interest in doing some private uh, phone counseling sessions, uh, give Shades of Hope a call and talk to Cam or Cindy and they'll call you back. And in the meantime, take care of yourselves. Love yourself. This is a killing disease. And if you, if, if you don't have an eating disorder, just be grateful and enjoy the good food that you're baking and you're cooking because if you're a normal eater, I know if you gain five or 10 pounds, you'll get that off quickly because that's what normal eaters do. Those of us that are, we think that we'll do it next week, next month, after Christmas, after my birthday, and that day never comes. So give us a call if we can help. Have a great day. Thank you.